in this video, my family and I visit the Amherstburg Freedom Museum and Uncle Tom's Cabin. There's links below about Uncle Tom's Cabin, the Amherstburg Freedom Museum, and everywhere that I've been in this episode. If you're interested in reading instead of watching the video, by all means go ahead. But if you're interested in or a visual learner can set up in like me, this is a great video for you. It talks about black history, black excellence, and some of the stuff you might not even known about Canada until now. So if you're interested, I hope you enjoy. That's where Josiah Henson's house was originally built. Oh, so, a quick recap for those who don't know, Josiah Henson is someone who is a escaped slave who made a haven for black people in Canada. After he was a free slave, he came to Canada, he created an area where there was 200 acres of land for black people so that escaped slaves could come and live here, free slaves could come and live here, and they just built the ground up from there. After we went to the actual Dresden Museum, where we learned about how slaves used the North Star, how they found it in the night sky, so that they could escape to Canada, because the like the North Star going north is the fastest way to leave the Canadian and United States border. Another way they used to find the way north in the forest, even the forest when stars weren't like visible. And we learned about two cool people named Ellen and William Kraft. Their <laughs> their story is insane, so just stay tuned. Celebrated ever since 1834. Wow. Wow. Now back to our big dipper. So they were taught follow the North, North Star. Star. Nope. Something gourd. There's a song that came out after. What's the song? <laughs> the song? <laughs> follow the drinking gourd. You ever heard of yeah. that? Oh. Okay. Yeah, probably, yeah. Yeah. So look at the big difference. They call that the drinking gourd because it looks like a scoop that you could take a drink of water from. Mm -hmm. So they were taught to find the pouring end. So if the water is coming out, it pour out of here, right? Those two stars pointed towards the North Star, which was on the handle of the Little Dipper. So at night, that was their reliable guide. You guys, where are you going to be tonight? Uh, Windsor. You might be able to see Windsor's because all the city lights you might not be able to. Right. But if, here at night, you look up, you can see it. There's yeah. that drink wow. you it, and you can follow it, and you see the North Star. I don't know if this is just like my own personal experience just talking, but to, to understand the effect that that has, just saying that by looking up in the sky in Chatham Kent, you can actually see the drinking gourd, which leads to the North Star is insane. Because it's basically saying you could still see a piece of history that's been used in the past hundreds of years ago to this day. And like that just shows how, the fact that it's still there shows how real it actually is. You know what I mean? It, it really brings it into perspective and changes your mindset, your, 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 your point of view on everything. It's just, that's, that's insane. Like, to get that through your guy, your guys' minds, okay? The, if you look up in the sky at Tamkin, you could actually see this. Something that was used to get away from a horrible mark on humanity. Wow. So that was their reliable guide. If they couldn't see it, what did they, how did they find their way north? I think it's too dark and cloudy, it's raining. They're in the middle of the woods. Didn't have a compass. The rivers? The whatever, the waterway that they're near? Trees. They felt Which? the trees for moss. Oh, of course. And moss is a fungus, right? Oh, it, oh. And it I'm... needs cool, damp conditions to grow. So the sun rises in what direction? East. It goes south and sets in the west. It never shines on the north. So that's where that moss grows. And I always look. Whenever I'm just in the forest, you look in the deep forest. That's where you find that moss for on the other side. So if they ever got turned around, they need to keep going in that direction. Wow. Okay. Couple stories we want to cover real quick. You may have already heard these. Any of these names sound familiar? What you learned so far? Uh, Craft. Crafts. Helen and William. Oh, Helen and William. Okay. What do you see here, young men? It's an in, in, it's a white woman and a black man. A white woman and a black man. Wrong. Wait. If I remember correctly, wasn't this the uh, wasn't the white woman 
capable of bringing a black man all the way up north into Canada because she looked white, but she was really black. That's it. You're right. So Ellen, they're both black, both enslaved, but she, as you said, was so fair-skinned she could pass as a white woman. So they said, hey, I'll pretend to be the slave owner. You, my husband, pretend to be my slave helping me across country. I'm heading north. But then she figured, well, in those days, somebody, a, a plantation owner would be able to stay in a hotel. They're not going to hide out in the woods, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So she put on a disguise. She put, she put uh, glasses on, these green glasses, so that the people couldn't see that. You know, I can tell looking at your eyes, those are a woman's eyes. Mm -hmm. And I can tell looking at your eyes, that's a man's eye. And she knew they would give her away, so she put on these dark green glasses to hide. In those days, when you went into a hotel, you had to sign the guest register. When, did most enslaved people know how to read and write? No. So she said, how am I going to get past that? I'll put my hand in the sling and pretend it's broken. So I can't write. Wow. And then, what if they ask me to speak? My voice is going to give me away for sure. So she pretended that she just had a tooth extracted and bound her, her, her jaw up with this, this, this wrap so that she wouldn't have to speak. That way she could get, <laughs> get through without giving away her, her identity. And so using that disguise, as it says here, they went from Georgia to Philadelphia and they eventually went all the way to England. So, but they did come back and help start school too. Okay. All right, now we're gonna learn about Elijah McCoy. And one of the coolest things about Elijah McCoy is he's a black Canadian inventor. He invented the steam lubricant, well, a lubricant like system for steam engines. And I feel like this is really important to highlight in this video specifically, not because it relates directly to slavery or how um, uh, slaves escaped from the United States, but it really focuses on black excellence and how uh, we, we black people created some of the, the things that are used today in a normal day society. All right, so next we headed up to Amherstburg, where we went to two different sites. One was the Amherstburg Freedom Museum, which we'll talk about later, and the second was the Nazare African Methodist Episcopal Epis the Nazare African Methodist Episcopal Church. And the reason this church is really important, and I didn't want to butcher the name, is because it did two amazing things that I want to mention. One, it held escaped and runaway slaves, which is really important because like the law back then would be if you got to Canada, you could still be taken back. Like slave catchers could go over the border and bring them back to the United States. And two, it's really cool because in 1999, after major renovations, it was named the, the it was the first ever black national historic site in Canada. Now with some cool things about the, uh, the actual museum, what you're looking at now is the Underground Railroad. I feel like this is really important because kids don't really understand that the Underground Railroad wasn't underground and it wasn't a railroad. That's what they think. And I want to make sure that you guys understand that the, the Underground Railroad was a, just a theory, a, a, whoa, a series of trails. And these trails were all, t all taken through by a conductor. And one of the conductors are Harriet Tubman. And these trails would go, I can't give off the bat, but this is a map that you guys could look at. And it, you could take all these paths, all these red dots, which would pick other people along the way, which would go by boat, river, sometimes you'd have to swim, sometimes you'd have to walk on ice. And the, the, the scariest part about these, these, the Underground Railroad is that you can get all the way to, I guess, the border, right? Where, where Canada meets the United States. And if you get caught, you're taking all the way back. So it's, it's, it's incredible how they, they managed to make it here and you weren't a free slave once you, a free, a free person once you got to Canada. So it wasn't until like 1834 when Simcoe made the law that uh, if you get to Canada, you're a free slave. But the thing is that's even worse, I don't know if I mentioned it in the previous video, but the, the law that he said is that if you get to Canada, you're free if you're United States, right? But if you're Canadian, and, and that's the law that happens, you're still a slave at that time, you're a slave for the rest of your life. So he kind of helped the United States citizens more than he helped Canadian citizens, which I don't really see why he did, but he did it and it worked out in the end, I guess. Thanks so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to like, subscribe. Um, that's all I have on Chatham Canon Black History though. If you want to ask me questions, I can make videos answering them or post it on my TikTok which is Maxwell D24.
Make sure to check the bio to read any information that may have been left out of the video. Peace. Have a good day.